Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And I'm Patrick from Tested and Tech Thing. And Patrick, you're one of the few people that I know that have this <laughs> new awesome piece of technology. The $35 PC from Raspberry Pi Part 3, the Raspberry Pi 3. Oh. So February 29th, Leap Day, is the four year anniversary of the initial Raspberry Pi release. So they decided to release another Raspberry Pi. Um, and first, I couldn't believe it had been four years since the original sort of drop. And second, there are 8 million Raspberry Pis out there, which is one of the reasons why we've seen so many different distributions and so many different projects built on the Raspberry Pi, because they're cheap and they're available. And they did something they've never actually done in a Raspberry Pi before. And if you search very closely, you'll notice something is different on this board. Because hmm, it looks like you have uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 yes. next to it. Um, what's different? <laughs> well, that's the same different color, same, same. Aha, that looks new right yes. there. That is the antenna for the Wi-Fi chipset. Built-in Wi-Fi. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, the Raspberry Pi 2 was a pretty significant computational upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 1. Much more powerful, uh, and it costs a little bit more. Yes. This one costs exactly the same. Yeah, $35. Um, I want to say 1.2 gigahertz Broadcom ARM processor quad core. It benchmarks uh, about 150% or about 50% faster uh, in single core and maybe even a twitch faster than that in multi-core processing compared to the Raspberry Pi 2. So roughly a 50% power boost over the Raspberry Pi 2 plus Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth, um, the Wi-Fi antennas on board, and then uh, they also kept the four USB ports and the onboard Ethernet. Mm, and previously, you would have to use your USB if you wanted to add Wi-Fi. Now, that 50% computational increase, it's mm -hmm. uh, 1.2 gigahertz now as opposed to nine, 900 gigahertz. That sounds about right. 900 megahertz before, um, and they're using, I think, a, I think, a slightly different ARM chip because it's also 64-bit now. Yeah, again, it's another, it's 64-bit, it's but they're still running a 32-bit operating system, the Raspberry Pi org. They're basically experimenting, like, is there any advantage to going to 64-bit? I mean, we're, we're talking about, and this is one of the things, a friend of mine actually visibly made an audible <clears throat> noise and not a uh, like happy noise, but a oh, uh, because it's still only one gigabyte of RAM right. on this. And a lot of people were hoping uh, for additional RAM on there. Um, it's still using the same USB Ethernet chipset, which is essentially, I like to think of it as a USB Ethernet dongle that happens to be on board. Oh. So if you want to do, um, you know, if you're using an external USB thumb drive or an external USB hard drive for, say, uh, a, a BitTorrent sync box, well, you might want to try the Wi-Fi instead of the Ethernet because the Ethernet and the USB USB share a single, what is effectively a single USB 2.0 path onto that Broadcom chipset. Yeah, how is the Wi-Fi performance with the built-in antenna and can you improve the range at all? Well, there's always ways to improve the range. I mean, the, the, the funniest and dumbest hack I've ever seen or ever done, not seen, is, is you know, take a, a file folder, take a piece of cardboard, you know, glue a piece of aluminum foil to it, or if you're really feeling whiskey tango, bend a piece of aluminum foil. Like if this is the antenna and the router is over there, bend a piece of aluminum foil like this yeah. and put it behind here and you will improve reception. Sometimes spectacularly. Um, the reception has been good. I was using it with uh, what I will effectively refer to as a miserable 802.11 uh, N router at 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and it was doing fine. Uh, it's not blistering fast, but then again, you're talking about his great element 14, which is the, the primary US vendor of the Raspberry Pi. Of course, Adafruit's gonna be doing mm -hmm. stuff and everybody else, but uh, element 14 did a ton of benchmarks and they, they did some raw processing benchmarks uh, and they found it performed roughly, basically in terms of CPU, a little bit behind a floating point, but CPU, you're talking K7, Pentium 3 class performance. That's like, what, what year is that? It's like 1999 or 2000. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right at the turn of the century. And it's only $35. Now, right. uh, because it's the same form factor, all your existing Raspberry Pi 2 cases will work. All the cool laser cut right. cases that you can buy online or design yourself, your Altoids tin. Mm -hmm. And I assume that's going to be in higher quantity, like the Raspberry Pi Zero that you brought in, mm -hmm. the $5 PC. We have no idea when they're going to ship more of those. Right. At this point, this should be much like the Raspberry Pi 2, where they're shipping every single one they make, and they should continue to ship those in volume. In fact, I have a suspicion that the lack of units on the Raspberry Pi Zero is because they were gearing up to drop the Raspberry Pi 3. Complete and total theory, absolutely nothing to back that up. All right, so what else can you plug into this, and how have you been using it? Like, are you using it as a BitTorrent sync box? Are you using it as a, a streaming device? It's. I get a little frustrated with the, with the sync performance on the Raspberry Pi 2, um, but then again, I'm comparing it to like an 8-bay uh, NAS, right. so that is a completely unfair comparison. Um, the first thing I did actually was to try to use it as a desktop. 
Ah, okay. And and one, I really, really love my Core i5 laptop, <laughs> which is, you know, 2015, 2016 performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and number two, it was actually the first time I ever felt that I didn't want to completely stuff myself down the nearest garbage disposal in terms of performance. Like the other Raspberry Pis, this is much better as a discrete device, as a, you know, as a sink box, as a pie hole, you know, as a little server because you're playing around with MAME or something like that. Um, that's what, where these really shine. Just like the $9 chip PC, which is a $9 single core mm-hmm. computer with a half a gigabyte of RAM. You know, you're not going to be like, you, you, they actually have, you know, there's Minecraft running on this and you can play mm-hmm. Minecraft. You know, the little, you know, the Raspberry Pi version of Minecraft. You can do scratch on it. You can do programming on it. You know, people who live in the Linux universe in the command line um, enjoy it a lot more than people that are coming from like a contemporary computer and trying to be like, I want to open these four things simultaneously. Don't. You know, open up a couple things or do one or two things at once. But it was actually able to use this uh, until it crashed. The software uh, for the Wi-Fi uh, and the Bluetooth upgrades pretty much came out on launch day on February uh, 29th. So immediately the browser crashed like 15 minutes into tech thing when we were, I was using it to show web pages and stuff like that. Yeah, hopefully I'll get fixed when these ship out yeah. in quantity. Um, and then uh, how about video out? Like can it do, is, is the new graphics ship, does it do any better video out? I know they it's do still... now H.265 decoding. 1080p, but still just starting to play around with Kodi and Plex on it, um, which I think is going to be a really interesting, uh, you know, if if I, I want to give some 4K video on that, I haven't had a chance to get H.265 and 4K video running on that. Um, hopefully in the next few weeks, because uh, at this point I'm looking at sort of Kodi and Plex, and there are a couple other video, dedicated video alternatives for this, and I want to figure out... I want to figure out which one actually works best mm-hmm. and then maybe do a build guide or something on that. Yeah. But it's it's been fun to play around with this. And on the other hand, there's part of me that's like, could it be faster? Could they put a SATA port on it? Could they have? Uh, but mostly I'm just thrilled it runs faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. So things boot faster, they run faster, um, and you don't have to you know spend another $9 for a Wi-Fi adapter and a Bluetooth adapter. Uh, which is, I think, a big plus, and not just for cost, but also right. for space. For space, yeah, because you know, there's like, I was laughing because we started looking for a, a Bluetooth adapter, and of course, the only one I could find, uh, or only Bluetooth keyboard I could find, wasn't actually Bluetooth. And it was Logitech with the yeah, with yeah. the Unify yeah. <laughs> dongle. So now I got to go buy a couple more Bluetooth keyboards because apparently I haven't bought a Bluetooth keyboard in five years. Now Raspberry Pi two, I believe, is still mm-hmm. they're still going to support it. Yes. It's still on sale, um, but the, that's the new hotness, Raspberry Pi. Pi 3, $35 PC, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, places like Adafruit and uh, Elm 14, 14, yeah, they'll they'll have them available, so check that out. Thanks for bringing yeah. it in, Patrick. My and pleasure. And can't wait to see what you do with it. Hopefully something awesome. Yeah, and you'll be able to find <laughs> more of Patrick's projects and his weekly show at techthing.com. Yes, please. And more of our shows on tested.com. Until then, we'll see you next time.